Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of Beyond the Pot. And today, we are going to the Caribbean. Hey y'all, and we're back with Beyond the Pot. If you have not already, I need you to like, comment, share, and subscribe to this channel. It is good for your life. But I have my best girlfriend Gladys here from the big, beautiful state of Texas. Say hey Gladys. Hello. <laughs> Gladys is one of my best girlfriends, but she's like my big sister. Um, and she came to visit, and I'm so excited that her and her husband TC, say hey TC. <laughs> is here with me today and Gladys is Cubano so that's why I said we going to the Caribbean today so she's going to make a dish I'm going to make a dish with her she's not gonna make a dish with me I get to cook with her today so she gets to walk me through this whole process of what we're making today we're making picadillo oh. with ensalada de aguacate and tostones I don't know what all that means so that's Spanish <laughs> so picadillo I could say that and then avocado salad <laughs> and fried plantain. <laughs> That's it. Okay, so picadillo is one of the favorite dishes of uh, the Cuban people. It's actually a dish that's done in a lot of Hispanic countries, but we're really, really fond of it. Um, the origins are actually, Cuban food is a fusion between Spanish food and African influences. Nice. So you'll see a lot of um, influences of Spain, as well as a lot of things that are native root vegetables and things like that but today we're gonna to start what we, what we call the holy trinity for us Cubans it's always gonna be your green bell pepper your onion and your garlic okay nice. so if you ch start chopping up that onion for me onion, you got it we'll get to it now Krista I met Krista cooking at Kids Across America woo, woo. she has a very distinct way of cutting her bell pepper and I've never <laughs> been able to achieve that so I'm gonna cut it my way <laughs> That means she, I usually would take it and cut all the way around to get the core out. And she's like, Chris, I still can't get it to this day. And I'm like, it's okay, cut it how you want to. But I do remember not, you know, you cut the veins of the pepper because they tend to be kind of bitter. Mm -hmm. So I always do that. How am I cutting this? Am I cutting it dice? You're dicing. Okay, I can do that. And you just, you actually, you just cut that the way you prefer. Some people don't like chunks of onion in their food. Um, being that it's the base of all Cuban food, we actually, of course, don't mind it. Okay. So, um, just do it, for, you know, what your particular taste is or your family's taste is. Do you mix it all together? Like, I can mix it all together in one bowl? You can. Okay. Um, so, the process of when we saute our veggies or our trinity uh, is what we call sofrito. Mm -hmm. um, sofrito just basically means stir frying in a pan. But, in other countries, just so that you don't go out and buy it in a jar, sofrito will have a tomato base added to it or mm -hmm. an achiote base to add it to it, which is kind of a colorant. I learned something new today too. She was telling me, cause I was like, oh yeah, sofrito, you blend it up in a blend. She's like, no, you don't have to do that. <laughs> so I was like, okay. So we tend to do this in Spanish. We double use a word to mean different things, but it sounds the same. So sofrito can come in a jar for some nationalities, but sofrito is also the process of stirring, stir frying together in olive mm. oil or of oil base, any types of vegetable. Um, frito is the word to fry. So mm -hmm. your sofrito just means just stir frying your nice. base or your veggies. I'm just getting educated. Y'all are getting educated, Y'all getting educated <laughs> here. So yes, this is what we're doing, just our veggies. Okay, and what's these things over here? Okay, these are our other ingredients. Do I need to cut these? Yeah, well, yes. Okay. Um, but they don't go in until the end of, okay. of our dish. So uh, this is what we call a pimiento morron. It's basically a smoked bell pepper. Mm -hmm. um, I can tell you the process. is actually char the outside of the bell pepper. The Should I cut bell these? Pepper. You can. Okay. Um, they actually smoke it and then skin it. And this is what it comes in. You'll you often see this stuffed. I'm sorry. You actually often see the stuffed in the side of olives. Um, yes. Olives are also a very basic staple in Cuban cooking. These are manzanilla olives, um, and there's a regular green olive, but it's stuffed with the same pimiento. We use um, the olive a lot in our cooking, and the juice of the olive actually. So you mm. have to be very careful when you season your Cuban dishes because they're of salty. course they're salty. The yeah. Olives are salty. So we're gonna use those. And then we will also be using oregano, mm -hmm. 
cumin or comino, as we call it in Spanish, comino. We're gonna use, we're gonna reinforce our veggies or the flavors in our veggies with our dry ingredients and our dry spices. Krista knows dry spices are always more concentrated and the flavors yes. are stronger. So I also, even before I knew you, ma'am, <laughs> like to layer, <laughs> like to layer my flavors as I go. So I layer Hashtag with tag season and layers. You yeah, know what I say? And layers for sure. <laughs> um, especially after you already added your liquids, you lose a little bit of the strength yes. of the flavors. So you want to reinforce with uh, dry spices. Mm -hmm. Sherry, here comes another part of our Spanish influence in our food. Cooking sherry. This dish can be made with red wine, white mm. wine, or cooking sherry. I just happen to be partial to the flavor of sherry. Nice. So um, I like to use that. And then we're gonna use a mixture of tomato puree or tomato sauce, whichever you prefer. I like the thickness of the tomato puree mm -hmm. and the tomato paste because it helps to thicken. Um, then we enhance, oh, we're gonna use actually ground beef. Mm -hmm. I like to use a 90-10 ratio just because it's a lot lower in fat and I don't like that grease sitting on top of my picadillo. Yeah. And um, I strengthen the beef flavor and extend my liquid with beef broth. Sweet. So, so pretty easy. It's some simple ingredients. I had all these at home except olives, right? Yes. Oh, and the pimientos. Yes. I had everything. So, so it's not hard. Like, it's not a lot. Of, oh, I don't have these ingredients. I got to go find them. Go to Walmart, go to Publix, your Kroger, wherever you have. Yeah. You'll find them all. Absolutely. And nowadays, even... Um, Something like a plantain, which was what is going to be one of our accompaniments or one of our side dishes. They're actually easier to find. You can even find find frozen. Yes. If you don't want to go through the whole process of making tostones or making the, any type of plantain, you can, you can cook it several ways. A lot of times you can find them frozen in the frozen section. Mm. Ooh. Well, let me put these over here because that don't that's not the sofrito. Yeah. So this is our sofrito, and she I was talking, so I'm not good at multitasking. It's okay. And cutting. So my pepper's not cut up, but all cut up. But it's that's okay. basically what we're gonna do. Yeah. We are on our way to the stove as soon as she cuts up this pepper. So what are we gonna start with? Okay, so we're gonna start with our trinity or our okay. sofrito. I always like to start with the bell peppers. It just takes a little bit longer for them yes. to cook. Hear that oh. sizzle, Josh? <laughs> I'm careful with the bell pepper just because. You don't want a whole lot? Yes. Okay. Um, them a little bit. So bell pepper. Cebolla or your onion. That's Spanish, y'all, if y'all didn't know. Cebolla. It's Spanish. Yes. Mm -hmm. And of course, the other ingredient is the garlic. I wait a little bit on the garlic, obviously, because if you overcook garlic, it'll get bitter. Yes. So I just kind of wait a little bit. How much? Probably about a teaspoon. I'm throwing okay. garlic all over the place. You said a teaspoon. This is the funny thing about us. <laughs> In our house, the more garlic, the better. So I don't do measurements. Obviously, I grew up cooking, so I don't do measurements. I would start off with a nice, hefty teaspoon, something like that. Ooh, that's a lot of garlic. That's a lot of garlic, and I might add more. <laughs> but, um, you know, I mean, that's relative to you, what your taste, your palate is like. You know, we happen to be garlic lovers mm -hmm. in our family, so... It's good for you <laughs> also, Amen. so I like to use it. But um, yeah, that's fresh minced garlic, yes. so about a teaspoon of that would be good. Nice, hefty okay. teaspoon. Um, you just kind of saute that, and okay. then once this gets sauteed down and it's nice and translucent, mm -hmm. then you start adding your beef. Translucent, that means when you can kind of see through your onions. Yes. <laughs> okay, so now that this has been cooking down, it's fairly translucent. We're going to start adding our ground beef. I kind of tear it up as much as I can. Mm -hmm. But you can also separate it once it's cooked, obviously. It's less work. Like this. You're so good. I don't have the patience to do that. I just put the whole pack. Well, I'm on camera. <laughs> <laughs> She's trying to be nice for y'all. Yes. <laughs> and most of Cuban cooking actually um, it could be actually a lot of work or a little bit of work because mm -hmm. some of our other very um, popular dishes or things that we cook often do require a lot of work, like um, ropa vieja, mm -hmm. which you have to shred, flank steak. Uh, but we use a lot of pork in our cooking. I just happened to do a beef dish today. But we literally, like that saying, the ruta to the tutor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Cuban people, pork. people from the Caribbean. I like pork. 
Yeah, we cook a lot of pork and a lot of, we use a lot of root vegetables like cassava in English or yuca, the plantain, uh, boniato, malanga, a lot of different root vegetables. After why you wash your hands. Yes, and that's a lot of what we do, um, that's a lot of our African Okay, so we have cooked the ground beef and because I bought a 90-10, there really isn't a lot of grease or bean broth. We cooked it down pretty well, so that's good because we don't have to worry about draining. I'm going to start by adding our tomato puree first. Do we need to turn this on? Yes. Sorry, turn it I on. I really thought I did. So I'm going to ask Glass a question because this is what I've seen. When I've seen picadillo, I always see potatoes in it. And I was like, Glass, we need potatoes? She was like, uh, no. <laughs> so explain the whole potato thing, no potato thing. Okay, it's just regional, really. Some people just um, ate, it, ate it with potatoes, depending on what part of the island. Actually, the biggest difference in picadillo, I think potatoes is more of a Central American thing. Uh, um, but the real big difference in, the, in Cuban picadillo is, as far as regions are concerned, is the difference between raisins and olives. Mm -hmm. So there's a particular part of Cuba which is, um, they use raisins That's in the picadillo. Cool. I am not a raisin fan. <laughs> and um, I don't like the texture of raisins. That's good. So even though I know that a lot of people use raisins, I've never used raisins. And if I ever went to somebody's house and they had raisins, I would pick them out. I was okay. that kid. So yeah, I think it's just a regional thing. Okay. Okay. So I've added my tomato paste. It's mm -hmm. kind of thick. It kind of binds everything together. And I'm going to slowly add tomato puree. There is not a lot of difference between tomato paste, I mean tomato sauce, mm -hmm. and tomato puree. I just like tomato puree. So you can use tomato sauce in a can? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Cool. Just happened to see this one uh, when we were buying ingredients and I like the tomato puree. Okay. Now I don't, I keep my can. I don't know if that's the Cuban in me and how we turn <laughs> use of everything we can get our hands on, but I keep it and I put my broth in there. To oh, get, all get that, that extra out of yes, there? Uh -huh. yes. I feel you, I feel you. I'm mixing everything, making sure that, that tomato, the tomatoes are very well distributed. How much broth? Okay, now the, okay, I learned to cook <laughs> from watching, not my mother, but my tia Mayita, who now lives in Miami. So that's how I learned to cook. So we don't, I don't measure anything. I kind of look at the size of the pot and I look at the meat to, to sauce ratio and I start to add to that. This is a really good mixture, so I'm not gonna add a lot of broth. Okay. So what is this, you would say maybe a little bit less than half a cup yeah. in here? Yeah, there's not a lot. Cause I don't want it to get too watery. I don't yeah. want it to get juicy. I like it to get um, a really that's nice good. consistency. Yeah, that's probably good. Okay. Because we still have that um, wine to add. Oh yeah. Okay. Now the wine truly is the epitome of going to flavor. So I start out with what, like a swig. What you would swig if you were one of those people that drank out of a <laughs> bottle. Yeah, I would put like that much. It gives it a really, really good flavor once the alcohol dissipates from it. So it's really good. So that's just how much I would put. And then how about how long do we cook that down? Well, it starts to change colors. That's mm. really how I say that you know the difference. It starts, the little redness of it starts yeah. um, going away. So it's not as red anymore and it starts to have more of a brown uh, color towards it. Yes. So that's when you know when everything's really like mixed together and binded and okay. the broth the beef broth has really merged with the tomato. Okay, so, so do I need to put a lid on this? You do, but I would season. Okay. So I'm still gonna do my layering. So I barely use salt in this, only because of the olives that I'm gonna mm. put in at the end. I'm not putting in those olives or those pimentos now because um, they're salty. Okay. So I would like to put those at the end. So, so that was onion. garlic powder and this is that onion garlic powder. powder. This is onion powder. Then black pepper. No? Yes, very no. little, not okay. a big pepper. So you're gonna notice if you guys are not familiar with Cuban cooking or Caribbean cooking, uh, a lot of people are only familiar with Central American, so mostly Mexican cooking. Our flavors are nothing like that. So we don't use a lot of pepper in our food. Okay. Um, our, fla our flavors are very flavorful, strong flavors, but not spicy. Okay. The one thing we have in common is cumin. We do use cumin. Cumin is very strong. One of my favorite seasonings. Yes, it is absolutely my, one of my favorites too, but it's very strong, so you yes. have to be Careful. gentle with yes. it. And I learned about not over salting my food from Krista. Yes, because Gladys has a very heavy hand. <laughs> and I've learned the older I get and the higher my blood pressure gets, 
the less salt I use. I'm trying, y'all. I really am. <laughs> so I'm measuring. Something that I left off your original ingredients list, but is a very important part of our food, is what we call laurel. Hojas de laurel. Which laurel. Is bay leaf. Okay. Dried leaves. Yeah, just dried, dried leaves. You can find them in the seasoning part. If you um, don't want to pay a whole lot of money, get them in the Spanish section. Spanish section of the seasoning <laughs> aisle. That makes sense. Um, and they can be dried. They, they don't have to dry. be fresh. Yes, absolutely. Okay. I've never, I've never used the fresh. Oh, okay. One. The chef here probably has used the fresh one, but I'm a home cook. <laughs> so that's it. That's it. So we're, we'll let that cook down. We're gonna let that cook down. I will probably check it in about ten minutes. Okay. You can cover it because you know everything cooks faster when you cover it. Well, I have some rice going, so. Okay. And then we're gonna make some. Ensalada aguacate and some tostones. Ah. To go with this. Yes. Okay, so now we're gonna make our ensalada aguacate or avocado salad. Avocado salad. <laughs> um, a lot of avocados, we eat a lot of avocados, but we eat it quite differently than most people are used to seeing. Avocado. Ooh, that's made beautiful. Like, um, you got guacamole. some peppers on there. Yeah, we didn't wash my, our knife off. Whoop. I'm scared of this knife, y'all. It's a real <laughs> fancy knife. <laughs> Yes, so a lot of people eat guacamole, um, avocado with guacamole. The first time I met my husband, he was upset because we met working in the kitchen and I used to eat the avocados like fruit. <laughs> so that's how we eat them. It's, it's a fruit, actually, avocado yes. is a fruit. So we do this. We make an avocado salad as an accompaniment to a lot of our dishes. Um, we cut it like this and then we just cut it in hunks. Okay. Traditionally, we don't use, our avocado is different. We use a Florida avocado is what they call them here. They're like this really big. big. Yes. And they're super, super green on the outside. And they're a little bit more, I want to, I really the only way I know how to say it is they're a little bit more watery, if mm. that makes sense. They're not as dense as an uh, Haas avocado, but people are used to Haas avocado, so we've ourselves have adapted and we use either one. Okay. You, you get more, obviously. You get more out of our of a Florida avocado, if you can find it. Other than Florida. <laughs> they actually happen in Texas now. So yeah, these are perfect. <laughs> we really did a good job. We did a good job. You did a good job. You picked these at the store. Yes. I wasn't there. <laughs> so there you go. Okay, so I had gone ahead and sliced really thinly, as thin as I could, some white onion, or some onion. You could use whatever onion you want. I, my husband loves red onion in this, but whatever onion you want you can use. I'm gonna make a quick- You should've told me I got some red onion. Well, it's okay. <laughs> I'm going to make a quick vinaigrette now. Huh. Mojo, if you guys have ever heard of mojo, is um, it's like a vinaigrette, mm -hmm. like a dressing. Okay. But we eat that hot. Contrary to the restaurant that we went to, <laughs> it is a hot thing, mojo is hot, and we, it's kind of like a dressing, very garlicky, very onion, and we put it on yuca. Okay. We're not making yuca today. So I make a cold version of mojo, kind of, but I put it on salad. That's why okay. it's cold. So I do some olive oil. Again, I have no measurement at all. <laughs> Lime juice or lemon, doesn't matter. Lime or lemon? Lime or lemon, okay. whatever you have. I have a- I would use lime, I like lime. So do I, I like the flavor <laughs> of lime, so that's why I use that. Some salt. Now I'm gonna make this over. I'm gonna have to make this over with some red onions because I really love red onions. Yeah, because we went to a Cuban restaurant and she was like eating those pickles. I red love onions. them. <coughs> so, so good. What's that, garlic powder? Garlic powder, onion powder. I didn't have any pepper here. You could add pepper if you want. Okay. And you just make a light vinaigrette. Huh, Taste perfect. Well. Lemony vinaigrette. Um, I love to emulsify this. Mm. So you could do like a hand mixer yeah, or a ninja. It works great in the ninja if you want to emulsify okay. it. If you're going to do it in the ninja, it's great to emulsify it with some onion, like puree the oh, onion in, in there. there. Oh, that probably be really real good. It's like an onion vinaigrette. Yes. It'd be real good. Now this is how Gladys tastes. <laughs> I love it. Yes, it's pretty perfect. Nice. Let me just pour that over, pour it over there. We're not gonna pour it right now because we don't want to. Okay, so we'll just put that to the side yeah. and then we're gonna we're check. We're gonna move on to Are we our... checking picadillo first? We're gonna check picadillo, we can. Actually. Okay, yeah, sure. let's check out picadillo, see what it looks like, and then we'll come back and do tostones. 
Okay, this picadillo is bubbling. Ooh, it looks good. And the house smells so good, guys. It smells like my growing up. <laughs> that garlic and onion and... I can't food. wait to eat. So, there you go. I'm gonna add in olives. Again, I know in this home, certain people love olives. Mackenzie loves olives. <laughs> Even though she did tell me today that she is particularly fond of black olives. Yes, she is. These are some green on green olives, pimento stuffed. My opinion is the more the better. You do that to your choosing, but it does, it is very much of the part of the flavor palette of this dish. Add those in there. Would you put black olives or stick I, with the green ones? I've never seen black olives <laughs> in here, but you know, Cubans left Cuba so they could have freedom <laughs> from a communist country. So I guess if you wanted to put some black onions, you would, but I wouldn't recommend it. <laughs> oh, this looks so good. It's a very hearty dish. It, this is like our soul food. This is like our mm. comfort food, you know? Picadillo is one of those dishes. Then the pimiento morrones. So pretty. It's, the colors are mm -hmm. amazing. There you go. You just mix it all again. Mix it in there and let it simmer a little while more. And those um, flavors are gonna marry. One of the things about this dish is tomorrow it's gonna be 50 times better. It's gonna mm. be so much better. Because, um, like those kind of dishes, there's dishes like, that just are better the next day. This like is, tomato sauce. Yeah, Like this when is you make one of them. homemade tomato sauce, Italian tomato sauce, and it sits, it's gonna be good. Okay, so we're gonna make our tostones. Plantain is integral in Caribbean cooking. They eat it everywhere, and mm -hmm. um, a lot of Africans eat it as well. We cook it and eat it in any way we can, however we can get our hands on it. So um, we call them tostones when they're green, like this. For those who don't know what a plantain is or have never had one, it does not taste like a banana, even no. though it looks like a banana. And the green banana, when it's green like this, that's when you make tostones. It's a salty version of the plantain. If you get it where it's like black and yellow, the blacker the better. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> the blacker the better, um, that's when you, it's very ripe, and that's when you eat um, maduros, that's what we call them, platano maduro. So, kind of get the hang of That's like fried plantain, like. Fried plantain, yeah, Okay. Yes. So, you know, all the, this is, this part, like you just gotta get dirty with it, you just gotta put your hands on I mean, it. Some okay. people cut them with the knife, but I don't, kind of like that. I didn't buy too many. Like for an average family in our culture, we probably have like six plantains. To Good make a lot Lord. of tostones. <laughs> but um, they're trying it for the first time here tonight. So. Yes. And you know those Jules kids are hard. <laughs> hard to please. Yes, they're used to this these gourmet <laughs> meals and such. So um, I'm very, being very careful of go. Justice's review of my platanos. <laughs> Okay, so I cut these and I put made, you know, some longer than others, but the thing about tostones is that you only half fry them. Really? Yep. Okay, wait. You half fry? Yes, so you don't fry all the way. <clears throat> then we're gonna remove them, we're gonna pound them. And then, then fry them, them again. Flat. Yes. Always like plantain chips. But not as thin. Thin, okay. Yes, like if you were gonna make plantain chips, we would take these sim, the same plantain, and yeah. cut it like in a, in a mandolin. To make it a super thin, thin. As, super thin. As okay. As you can. So let me get these tops. Sorry. So you just gotta these you have to really look at because you don't want to overcook them before you pound them to put them back in. Oh. So you want them like golden, like a little semi cooked, like where they start looking like they're cooked, but you know they're still they're not. Raw. Okay. I don't know what verbiage to use to describe that, <laughs> but yes, that's what I mean. So what are we gonna do to pound them? Just like uh, okay, so smash them? If this was a Cuban or Caribbean household, you would have something called a tostonera. Tostonera. Which is a tool that was developed to actually hit them Tostonera. yourself. But is it like the old -fashioned when they make tortillas? But it's mm. tostonera. It's different. It's okay. like the two pieces of wood with a spring. Uh, I know what back. it is. Yeah. Okay. But um, the old fashioned way, I mean, my, my grandmother didn't, my mother and my grandmother didn't have tostonetas. They have them now, but <laughs> we used whatever we had in the kitchen. So that's yes. kind of like what I'm gonna do here. Those look so good. And plantain, to be honest with you, you either love it or hate it. I love plantain, 
best tostones I ever had were in Puerto Rico in the rainforest. It was so good. Oh, You're not in even the filming, rainforest? Are you? <laughs> oh my god, I don't even know. Yeah, it was the, <laughs> these huge, the, the plantains on the tree were like so big and round, and the, the tostones came out like that big, and they made a what? green garlic aioli. To go on them? Yes. Oh, that sounds good. So I'm gonna start removing them, and I'm gonna do one so you can see. I yep. use parchment paper. Okay. Put it in between the parchment paper and the good old fashioned really? mash. Really? Yes. There you go. Ah. Now this one kind of broke up, but you know, I mean, it's not too bad. You kind of keep it together, and then you're gonna put it back in. Oh, I get it. Okay. So that's why I said you have to be really careful that you don't overcook them. Overcook them. So that they don't. Um, Oh, I don't know about this one. Uh oh, you got it. You I need got it. Tostonera. <laughs> <laughs> I've gotten bougie with my tostona. See, it's ah, uh, it's, it's coming apart. apart but it's okay. You got, you we got, got the, the gist of yeah, it. You got the gist. We gonna eat them anyway. Yeah. Okay, so while we took our little break, the picadillo was ready. I got, went ahead and plated that with our white rice. Mm. Fried up these tostones. I seasoned them with a little bit of garlic powder and salt. They're so Coarse good. salt. I'm making sure this little vinaigrette I made is emulsified. I'm just gonna toss it in there. Just for the record, we use like four times as much dressing <laughs> at my house. My husband's a sauce lover. Me too. Yeah, so we do a lot of that. There's the avocado salad. Oh, I know it's so different. Good. I know it's different, but it's really, really good. And there's times I'm in the mood where I just add a nice Roma tomato in there and make it just really Ooh, yeah. Even though that's not traditional, this is traditional. So that's why I stuck with that. But um, I would put a tomato in Nice there. avocado. Yeah, it's really good. You have tomato in the sauce, so maybe. Oh, yeah. It might be tomato overload for some people, but. That looks so good, There Lars. you go. Salad de aguacate, tostones, and arroz con picadillo. I love it. So. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe if you love this video and tell all your friends about it. And guys, thank you so much for coming and giving us a taste of Cuba. Good, and how Cubans say azúcar. Azúcar. <laughs> <laughs>